Welcome to another Founder Wisdom Pod with Melissa Powell. She's founder and CEO at PodMe. We're going to talk about HR immigration technology today. This pod is presented to you by podware.com. If you want to start scale, be invited to podcast. Melissa, welcome to the pod. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself and PodMe? Thank you. Sure. This is a real rapid fire. Um, so PodMe started out of my experiences um, and my uh burning desire to help others be able to move across borders and work productively without any issues. Um, so I myself, I am a, I was an immigrant and I'm now a repatriated citizen. So I went both ways. I went away for work and moved back to my home country. Um, and during that process, uh, I had pretty good experiences uh, in the United States. Um, in Spain, not as much uh, because of the issues they were having at the time that I was trying to move. Um, and then I also came across many people who would tell me they had an issue trying to find work in another country. To me, that was absurd because uh, when I first moved for work, I used yahoo.com. And by the time people were asking me, they had LinkedIn, they had <laughs> monster.com, all these wonderful job sites to use. And it was still a difficult process. So I ended up looking into it and doing a lot of research. When I got into the research for migration, I became pretty much obsessed with it. Um, and I realized how much um, migration helped the world to be what it is today. Um, the good things, the innovation, the job creation, um, a lot of it comes from um, people migrating for work um, and, and living in new countries. And that's kind of what makes the world turn, right? And it's also what keeps the world from being completely polarized. So I created this platform. And what it does is connect individuals who want to or need to move to another country. So that can be people who want to be expats, people who want to return to their home countries, or in some instances, displaced citizens who need to move to another country. Um, we connect them to companies around the world that have exhausted their local search for the skills that they need and now need to look beyond their borders for um, those candidates and what uh, what they seem to love about our platform is that is our transparency and relevancy so um, the entire process from uh, finding the candidates all the way up to cultural immersion is um, is held in one place and everyone can see what needs to happen at what time um, and then also in terms of relevancy so we are very particular about um, approaching the experiences, whether it's expatriation, repatriation, or displacement, they all have different nuances that are important to the process. And so we consider that from the beginning. And so all of that is helpful to all the stakeholders involved. And um, we're just trying our best to, to grow as quickly as we can so that we can continue to support people who need to find somewhere else to thrive because sometimes you know you're born in places where you are not your best self and you have to find a new home so hopefully we can help people do that and also help the companies to grow and um, hire more people <laughs> so. right and you mentioned that immigration basically it contributes to the world stability I, I do agree with that I also think that capitalism does you know because if you attack another country well you might risk attacking some of yes. your own citizens if you attack another country you might you risk attacking someone that is investing in your country right so exactly it, yeah it's definitely the lifeline and people need to understand that you and i we also talk that I mean, I don't know the precise statistics, but I'm pretty sure that someone that's born into a country produces less to an economy. They're just comfortable or who knows. Um, in my experience, yeah. immigrants most of the time are adding a lot of value to the economy. They're adding their culture. They're ad adding exactly. different mindset and that diversity, not the woke kind, but the real kind that produces results, uh, whether you're talking about um, making a community healthier, stronger, uh, or e economically exactly. sounder. Um, nowadays, um, you and I, we talked about migration. I've seen it uh, firsthand with people walking on the hot roads of Mexico. And, I mean, yeah. from Oaxaca to Huatulco, we're talking about a 
two days walk, three days walk, you know. Um, these were Venezuelans, they were Asians, you know, people are, are moving away mm -hmm. from countries. So what would be your solution to sort of fixing that problem and making sure that people do find homes in which they can contribute and have their new communities flourish? So the, the main thing for me is that countries need to start um, having having some kind of platform, which we are hoping to work uh, to build, uh, a platform that allows you to take a stock of uh, the people that are entering and what their skill sets are. Because this, we, in today's environment, we tend to treat people as though because they're refugees, they have no skills and they're just going to... Um, they're just going to not serve any purpose. But the reason that happens is because you take them and you just put them into these refugees ca refugee camps. And a lot of times they're left there for 30 years um, and not being able to, to, to work to the, to the best of their ability. So if on the onset, as they're coming in, you're keeping track of what it is that they can and cannot do, and then matching them back to these huge labor shortages that we're having across the world, then you know we can say, okay, well, our country doesn't need this person, but we know that that the next country needs them, and so we're gonna create a, a a safer pathway for them to get to the next country, and so that they can also be integrated into the next country, rather than just having people who are not necessarily. Um, useful for your own country sit and sit there and wait because you don't know what to do with them right so it's it's all the countries talking to each other understanding what the what their needs are in terms of skills and then understanding what these individuals are skilled at they weren't just sitting before they had the issues in their home countries they weren't just sitting down doing nothing these people were people who were working they were they were professionals in some instances and then bad things happened in their country and so they needed to move and this is what people don't understand we treat them as though they're not real people but they are real people they are productive people they just were in a bad situation so i think it's to change the narrative about what it is that these people are that they're actually humans with potential and with uh, professional capacity and then saying, okay, these people can help our country to grow. Uh, how can they do that? How can they do that? Yeah. How can they, how can they do that? <laughs> uh, well, like, like I said, you know, give them some kind of ID as they're moving across the borders, um, verifying where, they, um, where they're coming from and what, what were they doing in the country before. Um, and then identifying places within the country that they're currently in that need that kind of skill or finding another place that would would be that would find them useful. Right. You and I, we talked about an app, you know, um, government that would need to sort of privatize and act more like startups rather than bureaucracies. It's exactly. always hard because your end customer is, is so broad, you know, and it's hard. It's very hard to please everyone. As you know, in startups, it's always like niche down yeah. the smallest niche possible. Then once you're done with that one, you can go to another. Um, I do believe that an AI would be very good at that, right? Like know yeah. every citizen and uh, exactly Venn diagram a circle between the government and the community's priorities. So forth. Yeah. Um what would that app look like? What features could it provide to immigrants to have them integrate society as quick as possible, uh, be uh, financially healthy, and then can contribute to their nearby uh, communities? I mean, well, it would kind of look like Pop Me. <laughs> um, so it's, a, it's an app where it allows you to create your profile and get verified. Um, and then it allows you to connect with, the, with um, companies that need your skill set, and then once you guys are connected and you've done the interview process and everything, and it's a it's a it's a solid um, uh, relationship that you want to build, then you're also connected with all the relevant stakeholders that can help you to integrate into the new society. So whether it's um, people who will help you to find homes or people who will help you to um, get all your paperwork in order. Just any um, stakeholder as a part of the process of integration into the new society on one platform, um, and then also it will it will help you. You know, if if you're not finding the work in the country that you're currently in, then you're you have the ability to look and see 
where else? And they also have the ability to look for you. So that makes the connectivity much, uh, much quicker and it helps them to get to integrate into society um, much sooner than in decades. <laughs> so why are people building walls instead? Because they don't know. Um, they have a fear of people. The media tells people, tells the populations that uh, migrants are terrorists or um, they're, they're looting, they're killing people. And this is really just not the case. Um, usually if something bad happens, it's probably something self-defense wise or you know just out of sheer not being able to do anything else. <laughs> um, so I think import it's important that the media changes the narrative of these migrants. I mean, if you think about people who have done everything in their in their willpower to get to a new country. They've risked their lives to get to a new country. They are clearly running from something that is not good for them. And to turn our backs on those people is inhumane, in my opinion. Um, and this is not gonna change unless the media changes the way that they portray migrants. I agree with that. And I mean, you're, you've been talking about Boats, you know, we've seen that some of these boats, the conditions are horrendous. A lot of these boats crash. People cannot swim. Um, yeah. They die. You know, it's a horrible death. I've seen these people walk on the roads, you know, and I'm an ultra athlete. I do Spart I finished the Spartan Ultra this last weekend. And that's nothing compared to rock exactly. walk on hot pavement for three days you know spartan exactly. ultra took me 10 12 hours finish well that's that's literally um a very very long and painful walk uh they don't even carry water you know exactly because water they don't is have heavy. water yeah <laughs> they don't have water and foods because yeah. that's heavy you know so um yeah that shows to what extent these folks are willing to go to live exactly. a better life on the other side of the metal i'm i'm also a bit contrarian on that but i don't believe these folks actually need to travel if they have online education and know how to start online businesses but that's easier said than done well, yeah and in some cases you know you can't you they don't have access to the online education Internet, in, some, in a lot of in instances yeah and in other instances if you're being bombed <laughs> you know, or or if you're being threatened um, by being kidnapped, like at any moment, then no amount of online education is going to help you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you you just this have is the to... fear, right? And human yeah. cortisol and how the brain is still wired. We still have amygdala in us, and when there's cortisol mm -hmm. in your blood, pretty much all the time, you you don't think about these things. You think about fight or flight right Fleeing. exactly fighting exactly. is not an option because they're like 10 and they have guns exactly um, exactly so yeah it's a pretty yeah. tough reality out there um it one is. last question that uh, got my curiosity how's jamaica doing you know because we talked about haiti and how it's, it's not doing uh, super well uh, i think jamaica is doing a bit better you guys have tourism Tell us about yeah. the state and the health of the economy in the country. So, um, you know, we have our problems, but we do we are doing well, uh, especially in comparison to a lot of other islands. Um, we we do, as you say, have the um, the tourism to fall back on, but we are also having a huge digital push now um, in terms of one digitizing all the. Um, government bodies, as well as the private sector. Um, and a lot of that took place, um, I have to say very quickly during the pandemic, as opposed to in other places. Um, and that's because we already kind of had that technology community um, brewing before the pandemic. So now I find that we, we have done very well in terms of the transition and um, using technology to our ability. So we're building all these uh, new technology parks um, and, you know, we are introducing, uh, we're, we're trying to get everyone to be able to feel comfortable 
using the technology because we do have a high aged population that is not necessarily interested in um, using the technology. But for instance, a lot of the banks have now finally moved into, you know, online banking, which took a very long time to get to. Um, and so with all of that, it's helping um, it's helping individuals who didn't necessarily have a bank account before get a bank account. And getting a bank account sounds very simple to many people, but things that you can't do without a bank account <laughs> um, are a lot. And, um, and so having people um, now moving towards getting that bank account because of ease of transactions, um, it, it helps to um, move the economy forward. Um, we also have in, in many different industries we, where we have movement. So especially in the film industry, we have a lot of movement there. Um, we have, we have movement in just um, commoditizing Jamaica. Uh, and I say that in terms of we now have what we call brand Jamaica. So not everybody can slap our logo or country's flag on their product unless it's uh, verified by our government, you know? Um, and we have a huge ex culture to export. Um, and that comes in the form of our music or dancing or food. Um, and so we are moving forward in with a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're moving forward with, uh, um, I guess surety, but surety isn't the word I'm looking for now. Sorry, I had COVID and COVID gives me assurance. brain fog. <laughs> That's okay. Not assurance, but it's more like um with confidence. Confidence, confidence yeah. exactly. So we're so we're moving forward a lot there of confidence go. in our in our brand um mm -hmm. and what we have to offer the world, which is as as most people know, a lot. Uh, for such a small country <laughs> and that's the importance you know like if the the feeling is there the the stats will follow you know so that's exciting yeah. where can people find out still, more about you we still have a little bit of issues though because we are you know the teachers we have a teacher issue when we're trying to get more so if anybody out there wants to come and work in jamaica as a teacher please come on down <laughs> we need help with our youth um if people want to find me, they can find me at um, info at pakme.com or on Instagram or pretty much if you just type in Melissa Powell, Jamaica, you'll find me. <laughs> there you go. And I'm Charles Cormier, your host. That was another Founder Wisdom Pod with Melissa Powell.